All right, day eight. Welcome back, everybody. So in our job class, up until this point, we have been hard coding our job listings. And actually, on that note, if you're just building this for your company and at any given time, there will only be, you know, two or three jobs available and you don't mind manually updating this file uh, whenever a change is made, then keep it simple. This is fine. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. However, yeah, if you're building an actual jobs board platform that allows people to sign up and, and create new jobs, then this doesn't make sense, right? Instead, we probably do need a dedicated database to to house all of our job listings. And that's what we're going to work on today. Now, you'll remember when we initially installed this application, uh, Laravel asked us which database we wanted to use. Let me show you that again. Laravel new testing. And it'll ask me a handful of questions, and then it will pull in all of the dependencies that Laravel requires through Composer. And then right after this, it's going to say, all right, cool, what database do you want to use? So notice by default, it chooses SQLite, which is a file-based database that actually kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. Uh, it turns out you can use this in... I would almost say the majority of situations. If you're Google, you probably can't do it. You know, if you're Amazon, you can't do it. But if you're just a reasonably uh, sized business and, and you don't have database rows going into the millions and millions and millions, then you might be okay, uh, at least initially. So that's why Laravel chooses it as a sensible default. But yeah, otherwise, if you prefer MySQL or MySQL, uh, then you can select the one you want. So here's what I want to show you. I'm going to cancel out of here uh, with Control C because we don't need it. But if I switch back to PHP Storm and I go into my environment file, that database choice is determined here. So your .env file is where you configure all of the various uh, preferences and passwords and, and strings uh, for your project. So notice it includes such configuration of what database do I want to use? Um, is my application currently in a debug state? Well, if I'm working locally, the answer is yes. When I push it to production, the answer will be no or false. Um, what else do we have here? What session driver do we want to use? What cache store do we want to use? Uh, if I'm connecting to some kind of API as part of my project, maybe there will be an API key that I store here and I can add my own. So I could write some app API key and then I paste in whatever string they provide me. And then I can reference that safely throughout my entire project without worrying about very sensitive uh, codes or passwords or sequences being shared uh, potentially through GitHub and things like that. So this is important and we're going to talk about it more in the future. But for now, I just want to point your attention to the fact that if you want to figure out uh, what your default database connection is, you can visit this file or you can run an artisan command to view it. So let's go to the terminal. I will visit my example project that we're currently working on. And yeah, we touched on this just briefly. Laravel ships with a tool called artisan. And when I run this, you'll see a variety of commands that you can run, a huge variety. But again, like everything, you're probably in most, most situations not going to run 90% of these. You'll find a handful that you reach for, and then every once in a while, you'll reach for a different one. Okay. However, if we come up, you'll see they are sorted according to a namespace. So we have an auth namespace, a cache namespace. Uh, you'll find a make namespace. Uh, this namespace is for creating or generating files. So if you want to quickly generate a class or an event or a factory or a job, and you'll learn all about this uh, later in the course, you would use the make namespace. But yeah, if I scroll back up, Notice within the DB namespace, there's a command called show, display information about the given database. All right, so let's have a look at that now. PHP artisan DB show. All right, and now we have a quick UI into our default database. I can see it uses SQLite. The path to that file is here. And then here are the various tables that are included at the moment. Now, here's a key thing to understand. When we initially ran that Laravel new command, one of the steps in that chain was to run your migrations and build up the database and corresponding tables. So I say that because if you're wondering, wait a minute, we're just learning about databases in this video, and yet all of these tables have already been created. How come? 
Well, that's why. Now, I also say this because if you created a Laravel app without using the Laravel new command, you will need to run this manually. And you can do that by saying PHP artisan migrate. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's go back to PHP Storm. And you'll remember from up here, the path to the database is right here. So we can check that. Go into database, database.sqlite. However, what if I delete this and then we start again? Okay, PHP artisan migrate. And let's put a pin in that word migrate just for now. We're gonna talk about that more shortly. But if I run it, it's gonna say, all right, you're using SQLite, fine, but I don't yet see a database. Do you want me to create it? Yes. So now it creates it and it runs all of your migrations to build up the necessary tables uh, that Laravel thinks you want, as well as the tables that the framework itself will require. Okay, so now if I switch back to PHP Storm, it manually creates that file. Now, your next question, of course, is, okay, cool, but how do I connect to the database? How do I see the tables? How do I inspect all of the rows within each table? And the answer is, of course, you got to connect to it in some way. Uh, you could do it directly through the command line if you're comfortable with that. Or I would recommend using a dedicated GUI uh, for your OS of choice. So here's what I recommend. So visit tableplus.com. Uh, at least at the time of this recording, it is far and away the best database management GUI I've ever come across. Uh, it's a free download, and there are versions for Mac, Windows, and Linux, so everyone should be happy and all on the same page. I'd highly recommend it. So give it a download and open it up when you're ready. Now, once you open it, you'll see a screen somewhat similar to this, maybe minus the, the Laracast connections. Let's create a new one at the top. And one cool thing about Table Plus is they support all of the various uh, connections. So MySQL or Postgres or SQLite or even Redis, uh, everything will work. Let's click on this one here. And yeah, it wants us to know what's the name. We're gonna call this our example database. And next it wants a path to that file. So we're gonna give it a path directly here. Now you can either manually select the file or I will just do it in line. Users, Jeffrey Way, Herd, because we installed Herd in that directory. My project is called example, database, and then the file is database.sqlite. Okay, I'm gonna give it a test to make sure that worked. Looks good. Let's give it a color of green, save it, and then I can double click here, and here we go. We're all set, we're connected. So here's all of the tables that are available to us. We have one for users and sessions and migrations and jobs and failed jobs. Most of these, uh, I'll warn you, are used internally by the framework. And honestly, you can almost forget they exist, uh, especially right now, they are not important to you other than uh, potentially this users table. So come down here, uh, we can see the data. And in this case, there is no data yet. We don't have any records. But if I click over to the structure tab, Here's the structure for each of the corresponding tables. So for a user, of course, a user consists of a name and an email address and a password and uh, various timestamps, which is great. And we can append to these if we need to. So if I switch back to PHP Storm now, you'll see there's a migrations folder. And actually, I just wanna show you this one more time. If I switch back to the command line, when we ran that PHP artisan migrate command, it ran these files right here. Have a look, create users table, create cache, create jobs table. So it seems like the logic for creating one of these tables is coded in PHP, which is neat. If I switch back, let's open it up. And here are the three files. Now these are long file names because they include the timestamp, but that's okay. So if we have a look at the users table inside the sidebar, yeah, this is, uh, think of this as the blueprint for a table. So we can see right here, we want to create a table called users and then create a table called password reset tokens and then create a table called sessions. And real quick, if I switch back, there's users, there's password reset tokens and there's sessions. They're all here and they were defined within this very file. Okay, so now within the closure here, this is where we, we construct uh, the table effectively. So a users table needs to have a unique ID. So we call this ID method. Let's come back, there's the ID. Next, it should have a name, and that should be of type string. So there's a name. Next, it should have another string column for email, but we want that one to be unique. And yeah, we can keep going on here. We have a password, we have timestamps, and they're all represented here. Okay, 
So what if we wanted to add something else? Like what if instead of name, we wanted first name and then last name? Well, I could do something just like this. Okay, but it's not magical. I can't change this file and then switch back and give it a refresh. We have to rerun the migrations. And that's what I want you to think of this file as. It's a migration file, okay? You can run your migrations to make these take effect. You can roll them back. You can reset them. It's really very cool. And actually, on this note, one of the coolest things about migrations is how, because it's defined in PHP and effectively in version control, I can then share this with a teammate and then he or she only has to run a single command to generate a database that looks identically to mine. So there's no more of that, like trying to manually keep things in sync. Oh, what's your table look like? Did you add the index here? Make sure yours looks like mine. That's a nightmare. You don't want to get into that situation. And this solves that. Okay, so let's make this take effect. I'll switch back to the terminal and run PHP Artisan to view all of the available commands, and we'll scroll up to the ones related to running our migrations. Now, I see two immediately useful ones. Migrate, refresh, and notice that resets everything and starts your migrations from scratch. So, of course, you would never run this within production because it would drop all of your database records. But yeah, in the initial development stage, this is incredibly helpful. It's a way to say, okay, just drop everything and build up my database from scratch once again. The next useful one is migrate rollback. Roll back the latest or most recent database migration. So yeah, notice if I open up the sidebar, each of these is its own migration and you will create more on your own. So you could have a migration to make a table. You could have a migration to drop a table. You could have a migration to add a couple columns to a table or remove a column. Any of those could be their own migrations. Just think of them as actions that you want to perform on a database, okay? So you could say, well, just roll back the most recent one we ran uh, and then rerun it. These are all things that you can do directly from the command line. Okay, but yeah, in our case, we haven't done anything yet. So I will refresh all of our migrations from scratch. PHP Artisan migrate colon fresh. And notice it drops all of the tables and then rebuilds them from scratch. Okay, so let's go back to table plus. And actually, this is an important note that you will run into specifically with SQLite. So if I try to hit Command R to refresh, notice I'm not seeing any difference. So what I have to do in this situation is close out and then reopen the connection. So let's close it out, reopen it from scratch. And now if I come back and switch to structure, I can see the changes there. Very cool. Okay, so now I wanna finish up by creating our first migration. So let's go back to the command line. I'm going to say PHP Artisan make migration. And now it'll ask me a question. What should the migration be named? Keep it very simple. Just describe what you're doing. If you're creating a table, then write create such and such table. Now, we actually have something a little bit tricky here. I want to call it jobs, right? However, Laravel already includes a table out of the box called jobs. So, yeah, we don't, we don't want to double up there. So we'll need to embellish it in some way. Why don't we call it? job listings table. All right, and now it creates a file in that same migrations directory. If I switch back, I can find it here. So now I see two methods, up and down. Up represents applying the, the operation, whatever you wanna change or add or remove, and then down should do the inverse. So this is do the thing, and then this one is undo the thing. So in our case, the initial scaffolding is to create a table called job listings, but if we undo the thing, then we would drop that table entirely. Um, as another example, if you had a migration to add a column, then here you'd add the column, and down here you would remove the column. And that way you can apply the migration or roll it back at any given time. Okay, so they've given us some initial suggestions. Well, your table should have a unique ID and it should have some default timestamps. Uh, when was this record created? When was this record last updated? And those are usually good ideas to include. All right, so go back to job. And yeah, it looks like for each one, we just need to add a title and a salary. So let's do that now. Table, string for the title of the job listing. And then for the salary, 
we could actually set this in a number of ways. Uh, if we're thinking of it as money, then we would want to think in terms of cents. Uh, that's generally a good way to deal with money, a, a foolproof way to deal with money. In our case, though, we're thinking of salary as whatever the employer wants to put. They could put $500 a month or $50,000 a year or something else. So I'm going to keep that as a simple string uh, column, salary. All right. That's it. So I've created a migration class. I've defined the blueprint for that table. Now I want to run the migration. So this time I'm not going to run migrate fresh because I don't need to reset and start all over. I just need to apply that newest migration. So I can run PHP artisan migrate. And notice it knows it doesn't need to do the other ones. It already did those. The only one it hasn't yet done is this one here. Okay, so let's come back to table plus. And maybe hit Command R to give it a refresh. But yeah, if I come back, here it is. All right, there we go. So now I'd like to finish up by populating some records by switching to the data tab. So if I switch back to the job file, we have director, programmer, and teacher. So I'll do this very quickly. Director, salary is some arbitrary number. Uh, I'm going to leave the timestamps at their defaults for now. I'll do another one, programmer. 60,000, whatever, and then one for teacher, also uh, 50,000, something like that. So notice they're green. That means I've created the records, but I haven't yet committed them. To commit them, you can hit Command or Control S, and now that has been committed. Okay, recap. So we have now created a new job listings table, and we manually populated it with a handful of records. So we used a migration class to define the initial structure of that table. We ran the migration by running PHP artisan migrate from the command line. So now things are looking pretty good. But of course, the next step is I want to fetch that data from the database and then render it in the view. So how do we do that? Well, I'll show you in the next episode. Cliffhanger. I'll see you later.